Greetings, fellow Tralalas. Tiki here. And Blue Dragon 5. And welcome to the Main Street Cinema, the show where we discuss the finer points of filmmaking. Blue Dragon 5, Main Street Cinema, like we said, finer points of filmmaking. What, what film could be of a higher class and more sophisticated than that of Captain Underpants? Not many, not many. <laughs> so, of course, we're here to break down the Captain Underpants trailer, uh, the first epic movie. <laughs> I've been waiting for this trailer. I know, DreamWorks has been sitting on it for a while. <laughs> Boy, do they need it now. Of course, Captain Underpants, uh, starring Ed Helms and Kevin Hart. <laughs> Two names, uh, you know. Yes. Uh I don't know. Kevin Hart's fine. Ed Helms is fine. They're not like my go-to choices for anything, but we'll see how they do here. Uh, Dragon, we're going to save our personal nostalgia for Captain Underpants for when we talk about the movie, but I can say, Dragon, just kind of hint at the personal nostalgia. Captain Underpants is almost as synonymous with those famous uh, book fairs that we love to go on yeah, and on about yeah, as yeah, uh, something like, you know, as something like Goosebumps is. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's all I'm going to that's all I'm going to say about it. Like Captain Underpants was like the king of the book fair. <laughs> Without going too far, let me just say, I think for me, probably while well, a lot of people had Goosebumps, I had Captain Underpants. So I guess it's kind of I like, had both. <laughs> you know well, some of us had the pick, Tiki. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Some guess... of us had to pick. <laughs> My parents oh. were like actually middle class in the nineties. <laughs> well, uh yeah, before we can uh yeah, again, I believe I can go into stories like what brought us to Captain oh, Underpants. Sure we'll we save could. that for yeah, when, when, yeah. The, when the day comes. The point is we've I've been looking we've been looking forward to this trailer and just kind of this movie in mm -hmm. general. It's kind of great. So uh, well here's what we just really quick, Dragon, I just want to kind of talk about the nature of the books. I think the great thing about the books is kind of like the fourth wall -y break, the fourth wall breaking aspect of it. Kind of like the whole idea of like you're reading these kids' comic book, you're reading this kid's story, and it kind of melds the idea of like a kid telling a story with something that that's actually going on in their life. And I think it's very creative and high concept in that regard. And uh and I definitely think the movie's trying to replicate that same sort of style. And dare I say, Captain Underpants might be one of the first four wall breaks that we as kids are introduced to, at least people who grew up with the books. That's that. That's possible, yes. Okay. So, uh, really, we only know two things about this one. They kept this one remarkably under wraps, I, I gotta know, say. right? Because so, <laughs> I remember one day, just, you know, Maybe years ago, I mean, I don't really how, know how many, but I mean, I know that for a time, basically, I've seen Captain Underpants in kind of like the future DreamWorks films, like before I had a date or anything. Was really, I was surprised they had the property. Mm -hmm. And uh, from what I've what I've learned, I've looked this up recently, that it seems like they've had the rights to Captain Underpants for quite some time, even before I found that. So this has been in development for, yeah, I, I would say this idea for I, a Captain Underpants movie, at least yeah. 10 years in the making, at least under DreamWorks. Yeah, like, reportedly, it's been there since they've had the rights to this, or at least they've been after it since the Captain Underpants first came out. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there's been one notable uh, development of, re uh, of, of of late with Captain Underpants. That, is, that should be noted. I guess we should give our thoughts on this. Is that they've changed directors. So, initially, the, the director attached, remember you and I were talking about this at a certain point, the announced director, who... Uh, we, I know we've talked about the director before because he's directed other things we talked about. Uh, Rob Letterman, uh, director of the Goosebumps live action film, and right. some lesser uh, renowned DreamWorks films like like Shark Tale. Oh boy! Oh god! <laughs> so again, uh, I remember you and I when we talked when we talked about Rob Letterman during the Goosebumps. Like we pointed out, you know, he's had a kind of a hit or miss career. Sure, sure. <laughs> and it's kind of a similar thing. It's interesting how Goosebumps how it... isn't like an amazing movie or anything. It's just really fun fan service. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's interesting how much like Pixar, DreamWorks, they kind of bump up their their kind of their deep cuts guys, and they kind of you know, they, they eventually make their way to a director or like higher up the ranks. Uh, DreamWorks case, it's a little more obscure versus with Pixar. That's that's kind of the main difference. We can see DreamWorks guys get bumped. 
whatever. I'm not saying that it's a superiority thing. I'm just saying it's kind of it's a no. No, it's a superiority thing. I can say it's a superiority thing. Well, I'm done. To, I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, I think I, I think you know, we get to know the guys at Pixar a lot more than we do the guys at DreamWorks. Yeah, and there's a reason people That's know the, of, the guys at Pixar more than the people at DreamWorks. Well, again, yeah, let's not just poo poo the guys at DreamWorks. They're hard workers. Yeah, I'm sorry, they, you're right, there you're are right. like Walt Dorn's a really good story man. Of course, Walt Dorn's <laughs> gone many places, and eventually, of course, he was the, the, he he voiced and created a character in Shrek Four. So uh, I can make is, a mean joke about that, but I won't. No. Anyway, so let's <laughs> definitely not make mean jokes about Walt Dorn, Tiki. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so again, we, we've uh, the development is Rod Lerman for the longest time was attached to uh, Captain Underpants, and now we have another DreamWorks, uh, uh, someone who's worked with DreamWorks, taking on the director's chair, uh, David, David Soren. Uh, David Soren uh, directed Turbo. He was a story man on Shrek, and he directed something you and I have talked about. He did Merry Madagascar, the Christmas special. Okay, nice. That was that was okay. That was fun. So yeah, the point is that they 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 all have experience working working. Uh, with other I haven't people. seen Turbo from, but from what I've heard, like it's not great, but it's at least better than the premise gives it credit for. Yes, I have seen it. Too. I can vouch for that. That's okay. Accurate. You know, again, it's Turbo. It's it's good, good voice acting, good performances. It's just you know, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not not the most amazing story, but it's 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 fun. It's harmless, but it's at least no one it. associated, uh, no one directing this movie, uh, directed home. Oh, thank God! Yeah, it, it, like it, I mean, that's the thing that matters, right? <laughs> that's a bullet dodge, little boy. God, oh, a man. bullet dodge that Bates Motel hit. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, like Captain Underpants got homework. out of the way, and then like Carlton Cuse just gets hit right in the chest. Like, oh, oh, previously on Bates Motel, oh, I've been shot. Gary, Gary, <laughs> Bruce on Bates Motel, <laughs> it, it, it got me. Oh, oh I see a light. I, 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 I see a musical light. Okay, okay. Oh. Anyway, we're going to have a lot of fun talking about Carlton Cuse on Bates. We're, we're getting we're getting depressed on home, so let's move on to happier stuff. So let's yes. talk let's go let's go through the thing. As, as okay, so I love the way it starts with the principal just looking super angry, breathing down the kid's neck, the uh, you know, the ticking of the clock. It's all very it all very much uh is reminiscent of, you know, your time in elementary school and when the principal would be like the biggest monster in your life you know like the biggest super villain in your life yeah and also we should comment on the on the stylistic uh you know on the style of, of the film because we weren't quite sure like we assumed it's gonna be computer generated of course but i'm mm-hmm. saying there was also i mean if dreamers wanted to be really gutsy they might have done it 2d but you know anyway the point is uh the style seems very reminiscent of what the peanuts did uh recently i know not by the same company i'm just saying maybe taking a few cues from what the peanuts did I mean, I don't, like, just from the look of it, it's not really as refined as the Peanuts was. Because I feel like the Peanuts just did a very, very, very unique style that was all their own thing. But you're right, they could be taking some cues. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. Peanuts very has to be very, very specific to mm-hmm. that style. This one is like, they're just like, it's kind of a rounded, kind of three, a three-dimensional, fa- I call it the three-dimensional, 3D faithful style. So they're trying to be faithful. Uh, to Captain Underpants Pants as much as they can, as much to the 2D style, but it was a rounded 3D version of that. Yeah, and I could definitely say, you know, like it, it does very much feel like the characters that we've yeah. grown up with, for sure. There's yeah, this really, is, you know, there's not really a ton that's changed in the translation. Yeah, this is George and Harold right off the page. Yep. I'm impressed by it. <laughs> Again, they're very faithful in bringing it to life, I gotta say. Mm-hmm. Of course, I think uh, right here, this is what really won me over in the trailer. Well, I thought the Ferris Bueller kind of "Oh yeah" music was was oh, very uh, was very yeah. smart choice because again, it kind of summarizes the kind of these two in, in a nutshell. Like they're the cool Ferris Bueller types in the school. Yeah, and they really did. Uh, you know, of course, they stuck out in the original books as well. They work really well as kind of like fourth wall breaking narrators. Um, again, maybe targeted, maybe a targeted choice with the whole Ferris, uh, Ferris Bueller. Of course, of course. Of course. <laughs> I love how you can see the hand-drawn Captain Underpants comics in the shot. Yep, yep. Then, yep. Of course, uh, Dave Pilkey influence. Of course, you know that would be be very strange if Dave Pilkey was not involved in this in some capacity. <laughs> right. Right. 
And, of course, we have kind of the uh, – it's really – one of the great things about Cat and Pants that seem to be represented really well, especially in this scene, is the whole, like, you know, just these two kids create a comic together. And it's, like, such kind of an inventive, like, little, oh, okay, these two kids, like, you know, they have the big industries and – the, you know the big industries and institutions we have of characters in comics these days. Of course, they start off really small, like Jerry, Jerry Siegel, and Joel and Joe Schuster. Of course, like just two sure, kids. Sure. Just two and that's definitely I, I feel like you know we, we'll break it down more as we talk about the movie more. But uh, it, that was definitely one of the things that struck a chord for me when I was a kid is just the idea that you know Captain Underpants is really just a side thing. And really, the whole book is more about the idea of the kids drawing the comic book than it is about the actual title character. Yeah. So, by the way, let's discuss our voice cast for for a moment. So, okay. uh, we got uh, Pr uh, Principal Krupp uh, slash, well, eventually you'll see Captain Underpants. He's played by Ed Helms, of course. And again, I've always had Louis Black in mind for Captain Underpants. I guess Ed Helms, I think, is... Uh, I think Ed Helms is a strong choice. I think he's he's, he's good. You know, he's, I think he's, Lewis he's Black would get the crump side of uh side of him down. I I think Ed Helms is going to be is going to shine in the Captain Underpants side of the performance. Yeah. And for those just raising an eyebrow at Lewis Black, let me explain just for a mere moment. Uh, again, Lewis Black, because he does this great kind of sardonic kind of voice. <laughs> you know, he does like the fake happy voice, and I thought the fake happy voice would be perfect. Oh, for that's him. right. The fake, yeah, you're right. There is the fake happy voice. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So I think that would be like the great juxtaposition. That's why I always had Lewis Black in mind. Like, he'd be like the really grumpy, you know, principal crook, but then like the whole tra la la. <laughs> 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 it would be like it'd be hysterical. But regardless, though, I think I think Ed Helms still is a really strong choice because of that juxtaposition because he's playing Krupp so over the top in this upcoming scene when he's chastising the boys here. But still, he's, he's playing like the trial of like right on the money. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think Helms is, is a strong choice. I love. Uh, I I really do like Kevin Hart as, as George. By the way, I think that's I think it's a good choice. It, like it's fine. I just Kevin Hart is just one of those people who's really overexposed to me at the moment. So no, you know. I'm just saying. I think he fits the mold for for uh, George of all characters. He does fit the mold. I'll, you know, he he's fine. I'm not like I'm not like you know. It's not going to ruin the movie for me or anything. Certainly not. It's just. Uh, okay, here we go. <laughs> oh my god. We have a. Uh, oh yes. Right. And there's a little the freeze frame too, and basically it's kind of fun with the Ferris Bueller thing. It seems like they're kind of playing Krupp like uh, Ed Rooney from Ferris Bueller's Day Off a little. <laughs> right, right. I can see that. You know, but, but you're right. Uh, this is like a good freeze frame in the middle of the trailer. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, the, and the, basically what this trailer is doing, I think, is kind of a solid kind of combination of premise as well as kind of uh, just kind of kind of a little bit of superhero satire in there, which is basically what Captain Underpants did, kind of satirized kind of the big superheroes. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, that was in the day before they were made movies left and right about them. So of course, was, of course. Now they have had to play with a little <laughs> bit here, especially at the end. There's a really great joke at the end of this. So uh, I, I've also pieced together from this trailer, I know what kind of story, how they're unfolding their story. So they're combining three, at least three major elements from uh, three Captain Underpants books. So the, the majority of it is is the first book, the origin of sure, Captain sure. Underpants. You know, basically the adventures of Captain Underpants. And the, as we see later on, and also introduced in this scene, we have the Turbo Toilets, and namely Turbo Toilet Two Thousand is the giant <laughs> oh, awesome God. looking toilet. Because that was really, I love that design. I remember drawing the Captain Underpants stuff. Oh, like, this is just bringing cute. me back, Dragon. This is just bringing me back. <laughs> so basically, it seems it's, it's either a main combination of these three, or we're gonna have like one, a bunch of homages to various mm -hmm. things from the books. But the crux of the origin piece, so basically the origin Turbo Toilet Two Thousand, which is books one and two, and book four, which was about Professor uh, Poop. Pants. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, man. It was voiced by uh, Nick Kroll. Nick Kroll, yeah. <laughs> so, of course, right here, yeah, this is where I'm loving the the Ed Helms casting here. was just kind of playing it over the top. Because I got to tell you, uh, here's something they're doing that I like, I like better here than I did in, reflecting on in the book. I can't really say. It's, it's been years since I've read the Captain mm -hmm. Man's books. But uh, I was just re refreshing myself. Well, in the original story, Tiki, uh, Crump was much more sadistic and real-world scary. No, I, yeah, I mean... Because like, he, he blackmailed these kids into, like, washing his car and stuff uh, because he had, like, them on tape. 
<laughs> it's been so long, Dragon. I'll have to like go back and maybe see if I can read some of those on Kindle or something like that before. I'm saying, man, that out. sounds kind of twisted, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it then does. Blackmail. Here, this is like a much more over the top, hilarious thing of like he's he's like an evil plan. He's gloating over, and I'll put you in different classes. <laughs> Which I I, I I I was actually in a position like that in elementary school where I had a best friend and like we we wouldn't cause pranks or anything like that, but we would kind of like distract each other. And there yeah. were times where it's like, hey, we should separate you two. We should put you two in different classes. How would you like that? <laughs> okay, wait, hold on. I have to go back to that because this is actually the one moment in the trailer where I'm not I'm not a big fan of. Ah, shoot. What, the, you don't like the tiger joke? I don't like the tiger joke. Well, you know what? That might be a Barb ad that I'm just throwing out of there. What if that's the Barb at the Lion movie? At the what movie? The uh, Is it just called Lion or the the Oscar-nominated one? Lion? Why would it be a Barb at Lion? I, I say, I know, look, I know it's not a lion. I get that. I'm saying I think just because it looks really fake in that shot. I think that's what they're If anything, at. I think it's a Barb at Uncle Grandpa. I think that's fair. I think I'm not, I'm not quite certain. Let me say, are you saying the tiger looks really fake and that's why you're not, not liking it? Yes, I'm saying that. Well, I'm saying it reminds me of Uncle Grandpa, and that's why I'm not liking it. <laughs> I don't watch Uncle Grandpa, so again, I can't really weigh in on well, that. Well, literally, entirely. one of the characters in Uncle Gram Grandpa is just called Photorealistic Tiger. Mm. And they don't, it's not okay. a twist on the character, it's actually a photorealistic tiger. <laughs> but anyways. Okay, but I think the, I think the main point is that they're just like, they're commenting on oh yeah well we're not copying to this but yeah it would be amazing how would someone do an awesome prank like that this is just infuriating crop here. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> These kids are animated so happy and so buddy buddy it's so infectious it's kind of like a lethal weapon when they're kind of palling around the office kind of vibe with these. Kids. I can see that yeah yeah. <laughs> and this is great. Them in the Hawaiian shirts walking down the hall. But here we go. This is where Krupski is going on about his evil, very, ra very, very uh, rational plan of like separating these kids. <laughs> but, but he's animated like such a madman. <laughs> right, right. Because <laughs> <laughs> again, Krupski's absolutely in the like right that, here. Like that. <laughs> Because that, that's what's fascinating. Again, Krupp's actually in the right here versus in the book. In the book, he was sadistic, but here is, he's actually kind of in the right, but he's still just so over the, so over the top. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, we don't know. He, there could be nefarious things that he does in the movie that just don't show up in the trailer. So That's fair. That's we'll fair. have to wait and see. Okay. And of course, this now this is directly from the origin, folks. They of use course, a little hip, of course. To uh, I think it's, it's of course it's a little more stylized here than it was in the book, but because you know, again, Pilka can only draw so much. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is great. Uh, it's using the hypno ring to uh, kind of make their principal kind of subject to their whim, which will in turn uh, be Captain Underpants. <laughs> And again, I think it's a good you know, premise and take on the superhero kind of satire here. It's like all this kind of the premise here is in, in the trailer. Yeah. And of course, hearing the tra-la-la, -la, Dragon, that's that's kind of like a my childhood is complete kind of moment right there. Honestly, for me, it's, 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 it's as, as silly as it sounds, it's the polka dotted, it's the polka -dotted curtain cape. No, I I mean, just all of that, man. It just all comes together really well here. For years, I've been waiting to see <laughs> what this would look like. And just when someone just... Here's the thing. Maybe for as many years as, I, as I've seen, like, it's been, like, during the of the race, so I've always been curious, like, how would it look like when fully realized? And this is... This, this, this is it. This yeah. is as faithful as you can get to it, <laughs> We've had Deadpool head the toe in the red suit, mm -hmm. so, I mean, this is, like, this is as faithful as you can get these days. Okay, so I think most of the movie is just going to be the two kids like babysitting Captain Underpants, for lack of a better and and word. again, <laughs> again all this from the first book, just them realizing, oh my god, he could actually get hurt out here. We got to make sure. He of course, of course. Anything too reckless, but I think we're gonna get a villain plot thrown in there. So I hope that doesn't come too off the rails. So that's gonna be the my my. That's I think it's only plot worry of this film. If we're gonna we're mixing kind of the cat and underpants origin with like a villain so it's like telling two stories at I mean, once i'm guessing the villain's gonna come at like either the 
Because he is going to be the substitute teacher. Although, wait, that wouldn't make sense because my theory was going to be he'd show up when uh, the principal goes missing his captain. No, no, no. Yeah. He's yeah, he's a he's a yeah. teacher. Yeah. So. But I'm sorry, the principal is not the teacher. Two no. different things. I'm but, sorry. Uh, let me say there was something that was, uh, was about. Oh, right. here's the thing. So Tiki, what they did is they substitute the villain from the first book for Professor Poopy Pants. It seems. Okay. Okay. So that seems to be the crux of what they're doing because they had a really kind of bizarre villain in the first one, and basically, you know, Poopy Pants is one of the really memorable, cool looking villains. <laughs> sure, sure. For me, I always loved the wedgie one. I thought the wedgie one was really funny because she had like, these. Remember that she had the Medusa hair? Yes, she, like, yes. I'll, I'll like, second the wedgie woman. Yes. Yeah, that was yes. one of my. I think it might be my still my favorite of the books that I read. Sequel, perhaps. <laughs> I, well, they, they. It looks like they introduced her in this, so they, again, they're setting it up. Uh huh. Not the care. I'm just saying, like you know, the alter ego, because basically the teachers and a whole lot of that chat, on that chat. Okay. So they even have, like the <laughs> teachers and everything like, eventually become cares. Like Melvin's in this movie. Uh, speaking of Melvin, Melvin is played by one of the uh, one of those talented Key and Peele kids. You know, we got Jordan Peele. Oh, okay. As, as, okay. as Melvin, yeah. Not the you know, Keegan Michael Keys. Honestly, out of the two of them, I think I like Keegan Michael Key better because I see him in more things. But still, uh, Jordan Peele is easy, he's rather well, talented. Well, I think here's the, here's the thing about Key and Peele. I think Keegan Michael Key has the better comedic timing not to yes. say that jordan peele's timing is bad or anything i think but, uh, peele's more writing than than, than key is that's what I exactly think and i think peel is more he's more talented behind the camera like he's like i think he's got the bigger vision and I, I, whereas I, key is just like really really magnetic and entertaining yeah, it strikes me. Peel is impressions and and writing. That's that's. I think it's Peel's writing because, of course, he's done impressions of uh, of Carl Winslow excellently. Carl Winslow and uh, uh, Carl Winslow and I uh, believe, yeah, of course, Obama and the Obama sketch. Sure, sure. I mean, down the line, yeah, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, well, sure. I mean, yeah, I, anyways, I, I know that up. horror isn't your thing, man. But Get Out is a freaking fantastic directorial debut for Jordan Peel. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I also, so this shot here I think says a lot, and I'm really, really happy with this shot here, this gag. So they are dressed in the ridiculousness of Captain Underpants, where people are freaking out when they're the other <laughs> Right, right. Just, I just love the, the, the so she's pushing the button like crazy to get it off of this thing. Obviously, it's moving, so it's not going to happen. So it's, just, it's a perfect shot. This is the superhero sat there. Like he, right now, just look at the, the commit, how committed. Uh, <laughs> Captain is here. So, you know, he's like he's, he's like the Christopher Reeve Superman. But he's racing towards the helicopter to save Lois Lane in his mind. You will believe a man can believe he can fly. Yeah, you will believe a man can wear tidy whities and, and fight crime. <laughs> but uh, speaking of which, now let me one. Yeah. One one of the things I'm really excited with this movie though that's really been put forward in this trailer is basically they're playing Captain Underpants like diluted Buzz Lightyear. I really love that. <laughs> You're right, right. It's like diluted Buzz from Toy Story Two. Remember when he just you know he thinks he's the real space ranger? In this case, he it's a it's a character who thinks he's a superhero uh, when reality is not, and these two kids have to rein him in. Yeah, I love the idea of the kids having to rein in the principal and the principal kind of like getting more and more goofy as the movie goes on. Exactly. I think the mime gag solidifies the diluted buzz quality I'm really liking here because that's like the whole again in his mind he thinks you know, he's like he's Christopher Reeve Superman. And this as yeah. well. Oh yeah. <laughs> I think I'm weakening him. Yep. It's like you know, help me prop up vegetable man or we're done for. <laughs> that sort of gag. Okay, and here's there we go. Yep. Oh, oh I really I wonder here's the thing I'm really curious about. The, the Professor Poop Pants is one of the best things and this is the most fourth wall equality is that he had remember he had the giant board full like nicknames and basically if you put in your initials you get a funny nickname. Kind of, yes. And it's like it's like in the page, like you can you go through the alphabet and you figure it out. So there's like a key in the book for the people to figure. I wonder if gonna, he's gonna assign people all the nicknames like <laughs> Oh god. That, oh, that'd god. be that'd be fun. I mean, all these kids are in fourth grid and all these equations seem rather Difficult. <laughs> right, right. Professor P. Oh, God. <laughs> now, of course, here we Oh, I love this. I've always loved this design team. I've always loved Turbo Toilet 2000. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, because I love it. It has, like, the spice in there. But y'all notice this. This is It's modernized. And I thought this was such a cool touch. They modernized the eyes. They gave it kind of like a, kind of a digital, like, kind of Eve from Wally kind of digital sure. eye output thing here, which... It's really cool. This might be my favorite moment from the whole trailer. Just because I, yeah. I really like I, I really like how it melds uh the two Ed Helms personalities that we get. Yeah, because the idea here I believe is that uh Captain Underpants is is 
pretending to be a uh, crow uh, here. Which is wonderful. Which is wonderful. <laughs> and of course, we have just. So, I kind of, I'm surprised we haven't made a. Oh, well, we already did make a base motel joke, but of course, here's another base motel oh, joke. Again, okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 we made a no. wonderful, very elaborate base motel joke at Carlton Q's expense <laughs> for Carlton Q's. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah, if Carlton Q's is listening, I just want to make it clear that that, that was my associate. My associate. <laughs> Well, my my esteemed associate here is the one who, who does the the Carlton Q's impression, uh, and any any uh, any dissatisfaction that should be directed to him. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll make that clear. Uh, but yeah, I'm just saying that the whole like, a personality pretending to be another personality is right out of the Bates Motel. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what we're missing on Bates Motel season. We gotta see Norman pretend to be Norma. But not oh, actually, man. you know, not be convinced that he's Norm. They have to pretend to be Norm. Oh, man. <laughs> the, oh, God. <laughs> or, or again, somehow, you know, we're not going to get this now, but can you imagine if Vera Farmiga had to play Freddie Highmore? <laughs> <laughs> you know she'd be able to do it, though. You know, uh, that good it could happen. It, it could happen. Okay, and she put on British accent. It'd be hilarious. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Okay, anyway, so as, as the thing goes on. Well, I mean, she wouldn't put on a British accent because. No, 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 not. That. I'm saying her play. I'm saying just in another thing, she would play Freddie Highmore. Oh, I, I, now you kind of lost me, but what? It's fine. Yeah, totally. <laughs> he's got it. <laughs> I just love. I love that show, like attaching Captain Underpants to a giant, uh, you know, ping pong, you know, the giant paddle uh -huh. bowl thing. <laughs> It's just, I'm sorry, all these shots go by so fast, it's hard to get a good freeze frame on it. But uh, but uh, I love the joke that's made about these shots. I do, though. I do too. Oh my god, just, it's so fast, it's so fast, I can't freeze frame. <laughs> -la -la. You really get a sense of the scope with how it's all cut together. I know, I love the editing joke. It's great. Again, it's like it's a, that's a little commentary on the superhero movies, you know? Mm -hmm. And just kind of trailer editing in general, but yeah. Oh, well, true, it's yes. Really but yeah, it's also really, it's really well cut, too, just the intensity. Like, oh, man, that seems really cool. It is, it is. Okay. And again, here's the, the kind of the mime joke that, again, is kind of a... You know, it's kind of a fun like, little again, diluted buzz esque bit. <laughs> right, again, right. he thinks he's, he's he thinks he's helping someone, but he's actually punching a mime. <laughs> All right, so Dragon. As much as I'd like to see DreamWorks get back to the whole kung, uh, I'm sorry, not kung, kung Fu Panda. I, I still need to see those movies. Well, here, here's what they're doing, Tiki. Uh, next, uh, nothing in 2018, but 2019, first on the dock, it's Head Training Dragon. Good, Panda. good, good. <laughs> and again, that's reported. So again, they changed that last time. So I'm just saying that let's hope they stick to this plan. Because this is basically my final thoughts on Captain Underpants. Like DreamWorks, as far as I'm concerned, DreamWorks might as well just be like the How to Train Your Dragon factory for all intents and purposes. Because those are really, it's really the only franchise I care about at this point. You know, Dragon, I know, like, if they made another Megamind, I'd be excited on your end. I'd, I'd rewatch my Megamind. I'd get excited for you. Oh, but... uh, yeah. Oh, I'd love to see another Megamind. Or Elder sort of another Megamind. I, like, really, How to Train Your Dragon it's where, is where it's at. How to Train Your Dragon is, is uh, DreamWorks bread and butter at this point. And what I think How to Train Your Dragon does so well is the pathos of it. And Captain Underpants is the direct opposite of pathos. It is like the antithesis to pathos. And for that reason, I think this film could fit in really well into the DreamWorks library to kind of like, you know, like the taste, the appetizer of good DreamWorks we get before How to Train Your Dragon 3, which hopefully will be as amazing as it has all the potential to be, is this ridiculous, silly, fourth wall breaking you know, thing from our childhood, you know, got got a lot of nostalgia attached to it. So I think this is a really good move by DreamWorks. In all honesty, I mean, again, it's uh, it's going to be kind of a bizarre comparison, but they could be DreamWorks' Deadpool franchise if they play it right. <laughs> it could be. I say that in terms of it's, it's light, it's full breaking, but it'd be something, it'd be like the antithesis to Deadpool, though, and it's, it's kid friendly, but again, has many books you can adapt. Again, it's a lot of, you get a lot of range with Cat and Underpants. I love it. <laughs> but yeah, you're absolutely right. And I, I think if anything else, this, this film is definitely suited to be a franchise, for sure. I can totally see. It, it, uh, actually, I'll save that for the end. I'll save that for the end. But uh, any final thoughts you on your end, Dragon? I did have a hilarious a hilarious parody in mind. Okay. 
the commands like an SNL thing or something about this. Like, what what if Chris Evans showed up in the role? Oh for God! <laughs> 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 to the wrong set. He was just, well, what, what is this? Basically, it's like, no, 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 Chris, you're playing Captain America. Oh, oh God! <laughs> Captain it's like Chris Evans is just like he's in the red cape and everything. Like the women are swooning. He's like, yeah, of oh. course, of course. Sorry, wrong move. Sorry, folks. He has like a bald cap on or something. He's just he... <laughs> All right. Anyway, no, no, no. Seriously, again, I'm I'm very much looking forward to this film. Again, I'm like, they get nostalgic ties to Captain Underpants as well. Uh, I'm sure a bunch of friends of mine we're gonna we're gonna really get get a kick out of seeing this, you know, good or bad. It's just gonna be good to see it on screen again. At least visually, it looks very dazzling, very faithful. So it's gonna be an experience, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, and uh, folks, I'm going to leave DreamWorks stu- studio executives with some advice, courtesy of the great Michael Keaton. Franchise a thing. Franchise, franchise, franchise.